Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Here's a uh, crazy looking integral that I got off of the uh, channel Owl3. I'll link to his channel and his video in the description to this one. I am going to use a different technique than he used. Um, of course, I think my technique is better because, you know, it's, it's Feynman integration. So, uh, let's get started. Alright, so, step number one. We're going to simplify using complex exponentials. Um, we just recognize that sine pi x is the imaginary part of e to the i pi x, and that comes from Euler's formula. So we can write our integral as the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to infinity of sine pi, uh, 2 pi x over x times e to the i pi x. Okay. Next step, we're just going to define a general function in terms of a, um, well, actually, yeah, in terms of a and b, and it's expressed like this. This is, this is a function of a and b, because if you integrated this with respect to x, um, you'd be left with nothing but a's and b, a and b's, so that, that is a function of a and b. So, um, our original integral becomes the imaginary part of this function a comma b evaluated at 2 pi comma negative i pi and you'll see that if we if we plug those values in to here we'd get exactly this all right next um sorry Let's evaluate um, f of 0, comma, b. That means we replace a with a 0 in our integral. Um, so we, if we do that, you'll see that this a will become a 0. Um, therefore, this entire expression will go to 0, meaning it will just be 0. So f of 0, comma, b is equal to 0. All right, so now what we're going to um, now what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign to take a derivative of our function of a and b with respect to a by taking the partial with respect to a inside the integral, and what you get if you do that is cosine a x times e to the negative b x, and that integral easily that that's easy to evaluate. Um, you can you can do that with integration by parts twice, um, and then uh, solving for the original integral. It's called a fe that type of integral is called a Phoenix integral because you end up getting a constant multiple of the original uh, integral when you differentiate by parts multiple times. Um, but yeah, that that easily evaluates to b over b squared plus a squared. Go ahead and check me if you'd like, but that's what it evaluates to. I'm not going to show the work there. And this assumes that the real part of b is greater than zero. Um, so so we need that to be true. All right. So now we're going to integrate with respect to a to find f of a and b. Because we took its derivative, we found its derivative was this. So if we integrate it with respect to the thing we differentiated it with respect to, in this case a, we will get back our original f of a and b. So we integrate both sides. Obviously, if we integrate a, uh, well, yeah, th this is what we have. We have the integral of our derivative with respect to a of f of a and b. That's just going to be f of a and b, right? The integral and derivative will cancel out. And this easily evaluates to arctangent of a over b plus a constant of integration. All right. So now we need to determine our constant c. And remember from, um, from way back up here, um, we found this condition that um, when a is equal to zero, this entire thing evaluates to zero. So we can plug in a is equal to zero and set it equal to zero. Therefore, we get f of zero comma b, our zero is replacing our a, and we know it's equal to zero when that happens. And that's equal to arctangent a over b 
plus c, arctangent a over b, um, 0 over b, sorry. Arctangent 0 over b is, of course, 0. That means our c is 0. All right. So the function simplifies to f of a and b uh, is equal to the arctangent of a over b. Now, don't forget, our original f of a and b was simply this integral right here. So now we found a closed form expression for this integral. That's arctangent of a over b. Okay. All right, so now we're going to substitute back and just compute our original integral. Don't forget that our i was equal to the imaginary part of arctangent a over b. Um, so we substitute a is equal to 2 pi and b is equal to negative i pi. Because don't forget, way back up here, we said that i, we, we determined that i could be expressed as the imaginary part of f evaluated at 2 pi comma negative i pi. All right, so now we have i is equal to the imaginary part of the arctangent of 2 pi over minus i pi. All right, how, so let's, let's just recognize that 2 pi over minus i pi, that's going to simplify to just 2i. So our integral is the imaginary, the exact value of our um, original integral uh, can be found by taking the imaginary part of the arctangent of 2i. All right, well, how are we going to do that, though? All right, th this, is, this is what we're going to do. We're going to express the arctangent function, in this case, arctangent of x, in its logarithmic form. Um, and we do that this way. So, we're going to let x be a complex number. All right, uh, then arctangent of x is equal to the antiderivative of 1 over x squared dx. I'm sure nobody disagrees with that. But we can, dec we can, break we can write this 1 plus x squared as x plus i times x minus i. If you, if you foil this out, you will get 1 plus x squared. And we can, we can use partial fraction decomposition to further break it up like this. And then um, we can easily evaluate those integrals. This first integral is going to be the natural log of x minus i. Um, and this one is going to be the natural log of x plus i. So, um, and, and then I just, I just write the rest of the stuff. I mean, you, you guys can, you guys can easily follow, follow that. So, um, basically what we're saying is that arctangent X is equal to I over two times the natural log of X plus I over X minus I, but not really. Um, it's actually plus C. Because don't forget, we're taking an antiderivative, an indefinite integral on both sides. So we still have to have a constant of integration. Um, all right. So now we determine the constant. We know the value of arctangent x at x is equal to 0. We know it's equal to 0. So we write, so we have arctangent 0 is equal to 0. But in order for these things to be equivalent always, we need them, we need them to match up at x is equal to 0. So plugging in x is equal to 0 um, into this term right here, we just get i over 2 times the natural log of i over negative i, and that simplifies to natural log negative 1, and then you can express that in complex exponen exponential form. Natural log negative 1, or I'm sorry, negative 1 can be expressed as e to the i pi, and then using rules of logarithms, that simplifies to just i pi. All right. So, um, from that, we can determine that our constant of integration must be pi over 2. So, the final expression, then, is arctangent of x is equal to i over 2 times the natural log of x plus i over x minus i plus pi over 2. All right. So, now, we just compute arctangent of 2i um, and take its imaginary part. So we substitute x is equal to 2i, and, and we get this stuff. 
we get this stuff right here. Uh, that's that's just plugging numbers into a formula, um, and that that simplifies um, three. You know, this this is just a bunch of stuff here. Um, so arc tangent two i. Th this is the punchline. Arc tangent of two i is equal to i over two times the natural log of three plus pi over two. So now we need to extract the imaginary part from that. And that is, that's just so easy. Um, you literally just take the imaginary part of this thing. This is not an imaginary part, but this is. So we get rid of the I and that's our answer. So the answer is natural log three over two. All right, so that's it. We now have, we found the value of that integral, the integral from zero to infinity of sine of two pi x times sine of pi x over x dx is equal to natural log three over two. All right, guys, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Go ahead and check out Owl 3's video, see which method you like better, but I hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you next time.